Hello, hope you're all doing fine. In this video, I'll be discussing about various drug interactions in pregnant patients. So before that, before going into details of various drug interactions, FDA suggests that any drug which you prescribe to the patient should be given a particular category. And knowing the category to which a particular drug belongs to is very much essential because depending upon the category the drug falls into, we can assess its teratogenic potential. So first, briefly, let's see various FDA pregnancy categories given by Lynch et al. in 1991. So the categories include A, B, C, D and X. So according to drug category A, those drugs which have no risk to fetus either in animal or human studies do come under drug category A. And those drugs which have significant adverse effects on fetus in animal studies However, no studies are available in humans fall under category B. And category C drugs are those where we have no adequate animal or human studies to ascertain their fetal risk potential. And drug category D includes those drugs which have significant risk on fetus. And drug category X includes those drugs which have a definitive risk on fetus. So either in animal or human studies, the risk to fetus is established. And these X category drugs should not be prescribed to patients. In other words, these drugs are contraindicated in pregnant patients and in those women who are going to become pregnant. And if you observe another column here, breastfeeding, all those drugs which come under categories A, B and C can be given even during breastfeeding. However, D and X categories should not be given to patients who breastfeed their children. So this is in brief various FDA pregnancy categories and as we go on in next subsequent videos I will be discussing various antibiotics, analgesics and antifungal agents and their respective drug categories. Right, so now moving on to the various aspects of drug interactions in pregnant patients starting with analgesics, antibiotics and sedatives. The most important aspect is antibiotics, analgesics and sedatives should not be prescribed to patient, pregnant patient in first trimester as there is a greater chance for spontaneous abortion. So that's very important. And coming to various drug categories as I have discussed previously, all dentists must be familiar with various drugs and to which category those drugs belong to so that we can understand or ascertain their teratogenic potential. Now coming to role of anesthetics, nitrous oxide can be used in pregnant patients safely. However, it has to be used as a replacement for local or topical anesthesia and the doses of nitrous oxide should not exceed 30%. So if in case more amount of nitrous oxide has to be administered or we, if we are planning for general anesthesia or conscious sedation then we should consult a patient's obstetrician. And local anesthesia can be safely administered in pregnant patients throughout. And most importantly we have different local anesthetic agents and they fall under different categories and we will discuss them in detail in the next subsequent time. Now coming to the role of epinephrine. Epinephrine 1 is to 1 lakh can be safely administered to pregnant patient. Miklovich et al. in 2008 have proved that scalings, various restorative procedures, anodontic procedures and extractions can be performed under local anesthesia using epinephrine 1 is to 1 lakh safely during 13 to 21 weeks of gestation. That is during second trimester this can be used safely without any adverse effects to fetus. That's very important. The most important function of epinephrine is vasoconstriction and also it stimulates cardiac function. So through this vasoconstriction it in fact 
prevents systemic toxicity of local anesthetic agents so it can be used even during pregnancy especially during second trimester and to be more specific between 13 to 21 weeks of pregnancy right and next there is another correlation or there were previously many studies which suggested that epinephrine had a role in uterine contractions however in 2006 new york state department of health they have proved that there is no correlation between epinephrine and uterine muscular contraction so they are nowhere related and epinephrine can be safely administered in pregnant patients one is to one like concentration but one has to take care that this epinephrine or local anesthesia containing epinephrine is not injected intravascularly as it can stimulate cardiac function that's very important right next coming to lidocaine so lidocaine has least medical or dental complications can be safely administered throughout pregnancy either plain or in combination with epinephrine one is to one like combination and lidocaine comes under pregnancy category b so it can be safely given during entire pregnancy right however certain agents such as mepivacaine bupivacaine and urticaine they fall under pregnancy category c and they should not be administered during pregnancy right they should be avoided so lidocaine can be safely given throughout pregnancy the problem with mepivacaine is as i said it belongs to pregnancy category c and studies have shown that they cause fetal bradycardia that's very important so mepivacaine three percent which falls under a pregnancy category c causes fetal bradycardia hence it should not be given during pregnancy and coming to palocaine and bupivacaine the highest concentration in fetal circulation is seen with palocaine whereas least concentration in fetal circulation is seen with bupivacaine and also please note that long acting local anesthetics are not recommended and should be avoided during pregnancy and apart from this there are few more important points to be discussed certain drugs which are weak bases such as erythromycin tetracyclines codeine diazepam so these drugs should be avoided in breastfeeding mother because usually the pH of milk, human milk is around 7 whereas the pH of serum or the blood is around 7.4. So what happens is when a breastfeeding mother takes up these drugs, these drugs will enter from the systemic circulation diffuse passively in greater concentrations into human milk. So the concentration of these weak bases increases in human milk hence these weak bases should be avoided so to conclude the drug interactions in pregnant patients are diverse and complex so before entering into this topic we should familiarize ourselves with a pregnancy categories proposed by fda and given by lynch et al in 1991 so we have five categories a b c d and x and depending upon the drug to the category it belongs to we assess its risk potential and accordingly we should prescribe drugs to the patient pregnant patient and we have various drugs and their interactions within a pregnant patient most importantly Local anesthesia containing adrenaline can be safely administered to a pregnant patient. However, the safest period is between 13 to 21 weeks. Lidocaine is having the least dental or medical complications, can be administered safely. It's a pregnancy category B drug, whereas mepivacaine, urticaine, bupivacaine fall under pregnancy category C. And most importantly, mepivacaine 3% has a potential of causing fetal bradycardia, hence it should be avoided in pregnant patients. So these are some of the drug interactions within pregnant patients. And also I tried to give you a brief note of various FDA pregnancy categories and in the subsequent videos I'll be discussing antibiotics, various analgesics, antifungal agents etc to be used in pregnancy.
थैंक यू